not only were they learning the story of Esther, but they were learning the culture of Esther as well. So we're super excited to, to present this to you. I'm wasting time as they get in here. Um, trying to think of what else to tell you. Uh, Joseph is fantastic. <laughs> And he'll act like he's very humble, but he's really not. <laughs> he's one of those people when you look at him, he goes, look how humble I am. You know, that kind of thing. He's not really. Um, hmm. We're still wasting time. We're stretching. I'm sorry. Yes, there will be DVDs. Um, for, um, for one, you, it's $5. For two, you can have them on sale for $10. Is that good? No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't know what they cost. You'll have to check with the office. We still have. Oh, guys, we've already flickered the light in the theater, so you'll have to wait for the ushers to bring you down. <laughs> You're going on crazy. I'm still stretching. I'm still waiting on kids. Nothing like Michelle Wilde being late for the curtain call. Do we have a restroom? No. I'm sorry, we don't have indoor plumbing here. Question. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've been with kids all week. I can't hear. Um, those are recycled. Yes, we are a green church. So we have recycled camels. This is actually their third production. They are well-seasoned camels. In any other questions from the peanut gallery? Still stretching? Um, why is Michelle late? I don't know. Yes. <sighs> Nothing like royalty to be late to their own call. You want to pray with them? Oh, they're praying. They're praying at church. Really? Okay. That's what, it was a really long prayer? Okay. They really needed a lot of prayer? Okay, we still have friends coming in. Again, friends who are late. And people who work at the Ryman and TPAC know that once the show starts, you don't just come in. I do love you. Okay, here they come. They're so cute. Good evening and welcome to our show, Malice in the Palace, the story of Esther. We didn't have a big budget for the show, but we still have everything we need to tell a really great story. A king, a queen, a prime minister, a faithful servant, and many others. I play the part of the narrator, and even though I don't get to do a lot of the fun character lines, my part is still very important. At least that's what the director says. I can't believe you <laughs> fell for that. Stop it. We take, you to, we take you now to Persia in the year 483 BC, when the mighty King Athras ruled from India to Ethiopia. And in that year, the kingdom was abuzz with whispers and rumors of a terrible scandal.
And so the news swept across all of Persia. Queen Vegeta said no to the king, and he banished her from ever coming in his presence again. But now the king had another problem. Your Highness, on behalf of all your advisors, let me just say that was splendid work. It is written. Sometimes the lion must show his teeth to prove he is not the rabbit. Yes, the lion. Wisely said, Your Highness. Of course, Your Highness. Guards! Boom, shaka, laka, laka, boom, shaka, laka, laka, boom, shaka, laka, laka, boom, shaka, laka, laka, boom. Make way for the king. Make way for the king. Make way for the king. Your Highness, you banished the Queen. What? She can't come here anymore. You send her away. Whose idea was that? Now what do I do? Keeper of the Harrow. Right here, Your Highness. Your command is my command. I seem to be queenless. You, sire, but you look fabulous. Have you been working out? No. I sent her away myself. Oh. In that case, perhaps you should pick a new queen. Excellent idea. Go at once. Find the women to choose from. All right, people, let's get busy. And so Esther, a young orphan and a daughter of Israel, was brought to the royal court of the king. Before she entered the walls of the palace, she said goodbye to her guardian Mordecai, the cousin who had taken her in and raised her when her parents had died. Right this way, dearie. Welcome to your new home. Wait, wait. Let me speak to her. Sorry, sweet lips. You can't come in here. Please, it's my guardian. Let me talk to him one more time before I go. All right, but make it Make it snappy. The hall's only rented till 10. Privacy. A little privacy for the girl. I'm sorry, Mordecai. I have to go. I know, my child. You can't say no to the king. And I'll try to remember what you taught me. I'm sure you will, Esther. And I'll tell everyone what it's like to be the people of Israel. No, no. You mustn't. What do you mean? That's why I had to talk to you. We have enemies in this palace who hate all the people of God. Oh, no, what should I do? Be true to your God and to your people. Just don't tell anyone where you're from. I'll try my best. And Esther? Yes, I'm proud of you. You're like the daughter I never had. Okay, the sob scene's over. Now let's keep this thing moving. Tearing people front and center. Ladies, I'd like you to meet our newest recruit, Esther Baby, Surrette Your Stuff. Chosen for a very special. 
special honor. And your fabulous trip to the palace package comes with a full year's supply of beauty treatment. Six with oil of myrrh. And six with perfumes and cosmetics. Ah. Thanks, I'm flattered, I think. Ladies, show her what she needs to know. I choose this one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for our new first lady of the kingdom, queen for more than a day, Queen Esther! <laughs> Very well, my work here appears to be done. As long as you're in the mood for choosing things, why don't you select a new prime minister while you're at it? Very well. Keeper of the records. Who's on the list of candidates for prime minister? Your Highness, you have a loyal servant named Mordecai, one of the people of Israel. He's honest, hardworking, faithful, brave, obedient, and very wise. He also saved your life last year by stopping an assassination plot. Yes, but what do the polls say? Well, your advisor Haman is very popular, but he's shallow, thin-skinned, and instead of being honest, he'll tell you whatever you want to hear. That sounds perfect. Make it so. <laughs> Thank you, Your Highness. And now let me give you my first piece of advice. Yes? Your Highness, we know that people bow to you when you pass by, but if they really honored you, they would bow to your advisors as well. My advisors? Yes, my perfect potentate. They might bow to, um, I don't know, your prime minister, for example. Very well. It is written, when the king stands high upon the mountain, those who bow to him also bow to the dirt below. Yes, the dirt below. You have a unique way with words, Your Highness. 
and you, Haman, are a man after my own heart. Carry on in my place. Oh, this was the part. Good, yeah! Woo! Oh, this is the part I was born to play. Did you say everyone? Yes. Well then, that includes you. Oh no, I'm the narrator. I don't care, the script says everyone kneels to me. Well, I'm sure it doesn't mean moi. <sighs> I don't care, I'm an important part here. You're just a meaningless extra. Now get on your knees! Okay, okay. <laughs> and that goes for you too. I was the king's choice, not you. No, thank you. What did you say? What's the meaning of this? It says now Mordecai refuses to kneel to Haman, for Haman was an Amalekite. I am? Yes. And Amalekites were the enemies of the God of Israel. So? So, Mordecai refused to honor a man who did not honor God. I don't care about their religious nonsense. I'm a main character and he's supposed to kneel to me! Now kneel or you'll be sorry! All right, you asked for it. I'll make you regret the day you were born. You better do he says. You're going to be in big trouble if you don't. I can't worry about trouble. I have to do what's right. He's the prime minister. He has my lines. you got to listen to him. In the country where I'm from, God is more powerful than any prime minister. saw that Mordecai did not fear him, his anger grew, and he began to plot against Mordecai. In fact, he, ca he cast lots of ideas, lots to decide a good day to get rid of all the Jewish people in Persia. And soon, he went to the king with his plan. The king will now see his loyal servant, Haman. Okay, get in there and smooze, Persia boy. <laughs> Your Highness, I regret to say I have some shocking news. What is it? Most awesome one, there seems to be traitors in your kingdom. Traitors? Yes, a certain group of people scattered throughout the land who do not obey your laws. Shocking. Yes, oh, oh, exalted one, I believe you must get rid of these troublemakers at once. 
Haman, how? It would be my joy to handle all the unpleasant details. Just say the word and I'll have them all destroyed. Your kindness touches me deeply. Take my royal ring and do whatever you need to do with it. And now I wish to leave. Guards! I seem to have a proclamation right here, and it's sealed with the king's ring. Keeper of the records! Read this out. On the 13th day of the 12th month of the month of Adar, all the, all the Israels, all the people of Israel shall be destroyed, killed, and annihilated, and their goods shall be plundered. So, Mordecai, one way or another, you'll fall down before me. <laughs> when Mordecai learned what Haman had done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and sat, in, sat at the king's gate in deep distrust. And when Esther heard of his grief, she sent a word to him asking what was wrong. And Mordecai wrote back a secret message. My daughter Esther, our people are in great danger. You must go to the king at once and beg for mercy. The king without being summoned. All who break this law are put to death. The only exception is for the king to raise his, raise his golden scepter and spare your life. My daughter Esther, if you remain silent, you will perish anyway. And who knows, it may be that God has placed you in the palace for just a such a time as this. Dearest Mordecai, go and gather all the Jewish people in the city too fast and pray for me. And I will pray as well. And after three days, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I die, I die. For you whispered in my heartbeat on the 
find you in the inner court of the palace in the front of the king's hall. my queen? My king, I have a favor to ask. It is written, when courage speaks, a wise man listens. Let it be said that this woman may ask me for anything, even up to half my kingdom. Thank you, gracious king. My request is this. I want you to come to a special banquet I'm preparing. You too, Haman. How thoughtful of you, my queen. <laughs> and then what? And then, Your Highness, I will share what's on my heart. Ooh, that's mysterious. You're going to surprise us. I'm certainly going to try. Once again, my queen, ask for anything and I will grant it. And that day, Haman hurried home in high spirits, confident of his power and position. And there he called together his friends and family for a party in his own honor. My darling Zeresh, friends, thank you so much for coming. Tonight I want to share with you some wonderful news. Queen Esther has chosen me and me alone to be a special guest at a great banquet for the king tomorrow night. <laughs> so I have just one thing to say to all of you. I'm king of the world! <laughs> Well, not everyone. No. There's that horrible Mordecai that sits at the king's gate every day and mocks me. Well, don't you pay any attention to him. I'm sorry, my precious kumquat. I just can't help it. I know, my little lotus blossom. Why don't you build a 75-foot sharpened pole and hang Mordecai from it tomorrow? That'll put you in a good mood for the king's dinner. My little Turkish delight, you always know how to cheer me up. I'll talk to the king about it first thing tomorrow morning. And until then, my succulent pig, you can tell us about your wonderful plans. Yes, me, me, me. Now it's time to celebrate the end of everything I hate. Tomorrow, face a day to die. I'm a man who had no will to make a plot with secret skill. A man with brains and iron nerves. I'll get the things that I deserve. Three cheers. For there's a plan no one can see. A final day that waits for me. There's only one who knows it all. And it would take a miracle. It would take a miracle. It would take a miracle. This I vow. Yes, it would take a miracle. Really take a miracle. Never to save them now.
Much later that night in the palace, the king could not sleep. Keeper of the records, read for me the great deeds of government. So I don't put you to sleep for sure. <sighs> Just start anywhere. On the tenth day of the fifth month of the fourth year of the reign of the mighty king of Persia, two men plotted to kill the king. But the king's faithful servant Mordecai overheard the plot and reported it, thus sparing the king's life. Later on the fifth day... Stop! Month, I remember when that happened. Did anyone ever reward this Mordecai? No, Your Highness. Oh, tacky, tacky, tacky. We should really do something. Oh, Your Highness, do I see a brainstorm coming? I don't know. Where are my advisors when I need them? Announcing the amazingly convenient arrival of the Prime Minister, Haman. <laughs> Haman, just the man I wanted to see. How do I honor someone that has done me a great deed? You want to honor someone? Yes. Someone close by, perhaps, who is always looking out for you. You guessed it, then. I think so. Well, then, give that person one of your royal robes, put him on one of your horses, and give one of your princes parade him around the streets proclaiming, here is a man the king wishes to honor. Splendid idea. And, oh, king, can I modestly ask, am I to be the one? Yes, if you want to. Thank you, king. You will be the one to lead the horse. To lead the horse? Yes, just as you said. Now go at once. I wish to honor my faithful servant Mordecai this very day. Mordecai? Doesn't that just say you are me, Master? <laughs> Mordecai? Honor Mordecai, the man he hated. Oh, no. We don't even have a horse. Use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding. This is ridiculous. And before Haman had time to object further, he found himself out on the streets of the city, and there led Mordecai up and down, shouting, This is the man the king delights to honor. Go ahead, Jeremiah, I'm making it.
you wish for me, even up to half my kingdom is? My life and the life of my people. What? Your Highness, there's someone in your kingdom who wishes to kill me. <gasps> who would dare such a thing? This man I'm talking about is in this very room. <gasps> Don't worry, Your Majesty. I'll protect you. This man is also planning the death of my family and friends. <gasps> Tell me his name and I will show him the end of his plotting. This is the man, Hayan! <gasps> Hayan? No. Uh, wait, there's been a terrible mistake. Indeed, there has. Your, now, Your Highness, O oh great and merciful and forgiving Father of all, remember, it is written, uh, if you have a hot potato, uh, let it cool down, huh? I cannot stand to be in your presence. I must think before I act. <sighs> Esther, I did not know that you were one of those lovely people of Israel. And when I said I wanted to kill all of you, I meant it in the best possible way. <laughs> Please let go of me! I've always thought you were nice. Really, I did. Please stop! You're hurting me! S-C-O-B! You would plot against my queen, but you would put your hands on her in my own palace. It is written, you are dead meat! <laughs> now wait just a minute. <laughs> Tell a story. A king. A queen. A prime minister. A faithful servant. And many more. And whenever the story is told, all God's people, great and small, celebrate the one who has placed us here 
where we are for a reason. So let's celebrate!